Hello, my name is Matthew Chaskowski, or Brick Maniac Builder, on Instagram, and I built the L Battle of the Ludendorff Bridge in LEGO. So, what is the historical significance behind this battle? Uh, this battle uh, was uh, in March 1945, and was the last bridge across the Rhine River into Germany. And the Allies really wanted to get uh, onto this bridge because the Germans were going to blow it up to stop the Allied advance into Germany because this was at the very uh, end of the war so they wanted to get across so that way they could end the war but this was the last bridge that was across the Rhine so then they attacked it uh, while, while the Germans were retreating so then the Germans tried to counterattack and halfway toward or halfway in the battle uh, the bridge actually, the Germans actually detonated explosives, and but the bridge actually still uh, held, and then the Allies were able to cross and capture the the bridge. I see. No, that's a great overview there. So let's dive into the build then, and we can start at this end. I think we have the Allies down here. So what all is happening in this section? All right, so over here, this is the first part of the build that I started working on, actually. So up here on this side, we have um, uh, the United States uh, tank division rolling up through the hills and onto the bridge where they are going, uh, trying to make their way across the bridge. And you can see soldiers running through, uh, attempting to uh, cross the bridge and get to the, the front of the battle. Uh, we've got uh, injured... The injured uh, all across the the bridge, and we've got um, we've got some tree designs, especially this tree design I really uh, like because it simulates like a pine tree, mm -hmm. and I actually got that design off of online. And same with these types of tree designs, I really think that the trees give a lot to the build, especially on where it's located in uh, the mountainous terrain. Um, you can see now these towers were actually pretty difficult to uh, design, but I actually found um, online uh, some somebody else did a Battle of the Ludendorff Bridge build, uh, I think last year, and I saw how they did their towers, so I tried to uh, simulate the design as well um, with those cheese wedges in between to make those angles like that. So I think that really made what the what this mock is and i really like how that turned out the cheese slopes really help kind of fill in those gaps exactly now what does this little building over here represent now over here it's just some like little farmhouse you can see there's some uh allied troops w trying to throw a grenade in there try and make sure the germans are out of there but the germans are coming out through the other door and they're about to ambush those americans over there and then you've got kind of a train track running underneath the, the bridge section here? Yes, because the Ludendorff Bridge is actually, a bri uh, is actually a train bridge, which the Germans had used to uh, transport a lot of their, um, their military and uh, supplies across to France while they, were, uh, while they still had France. Uh, so there's train tracks running uh, across the bridge and underneath on the Allies' side. Okay, very nice. So that takes us to the, the water section of the bridge then and what's happening over here. Yes. So uh, I really like the studs on the water. I think that really makes it look very flowy to make it look like there is water without actually using water. And the, the big bridge design was actually something that was almost last minute um, because that that bridge design, I tried to um, like try and get different ideas or ways that I could build a bridge. Because not only did I have to build just a bridge that's across, I also had to uh, build the bridge so that way it looks like the Ludendorff Bridge because of the battle. So when I was actually transporting this from my house to here, which is not that far. But this entire bridge fell apart, so I had to rebuild the whole thing on Friday, which was really difficult, but, I mean, it's here now, so at least it's not completely wrecked. But you can see some uh, the, the allies moving 
um, across the bridge and kind of stuck in the middle where the Germans are trying to uh, stop their advance over there. You can see many like trucks and vehicles like destroyed or just abandoned and yeah you can see there's little I made like little holes uh, in the bridge to make it look like there's been bombs, explosives, a lot of uh, warfare in there which so yeah. So a lot of action and conflict happening in kind of the center section on the bridge. Now we'll move over to the the German side here. All right so over here uh, we've got um, some tanks uh, rolling across the bridge and underneath because we've got a panther uh, over on the far end that's making its way towards the bridge with a truck and some other uh, uh, German infantrymen uh, coming across. You've got a tank destroyer right here uh, trying to uh, take out any of the allied tanks that may have made it onto the bridge. And we've got some, uh, like, half-track. We've got a, a, a German car with the Tiger tank actually in the coming through the bridge. Uh, and uh, some trucks over on that other side. And we've also got uh, the same, si same thing as on the other side. We've got those towers and kind of that design as well got the great lighting effects as well yes yes I actually because uh, I actually got uh, uh, one of those lighting effects for for uh, I think it was Christmas and we messed around with it because I was just looking at it like huh what, what does this do so then when I figured out what it did I put it in one of the towers and it was perfect so then later I bought another one to put it in the other tower so that way it looks more alive and then a lot of action happening in the corner over there with the Germans. What all is happening in that section? Yes, yeah, so actually there's supposed to be a cover. Um, there's supposed to be land where the bunker is, which is uh, over on the other table. But yeah, that is removable, so you can see there is a bunker with an artillery position. Probably not historically accurate, but I really liked... Uh, I really wanted to do that because I haven't done one of the, something like that before where you could remove it and see what's inside. So I really like that. You've got a, a, a truck with an artillery gun on there, too. And we've also got a, a, like a command post where uh, three German officers and field commanders are trying to discuss how they're going to try and win this battle and stop the Allied advance. And so we've got also some gold in the back, some stolen gold. So, yeah. So... This whole layout is very impressive here. What was your research process like in terms of looking at photos or kind of figuring out how to lay this all out? So originally, uh, what I did from for my what, what I did for my previous mock because I did a Battle of the Bulge, which was one that I was going to bring to Brickworld in 2021, but then that was canceled. What I did for that was print out pictures and put it to a little um, little like tack board, which I also did for this build where I looked at images of the Ludendorff Bridge and also Lego ones, so that way I could see, okay, this is how it's supposed to look like, and this is how I'm going to design it with Legos. No, that works really well, and this is quite a long layout. Do you know the dimensions of this whole thing? Uh, yes, I actually do. It's, um, I believe from end to end, it's 7.59 feet across and 3.59 feet wide. And with all this action, you've got tons of great minifigures in here. Do you know how many there are? And can you maybe point out a few of your favorites and some of the details there? Yes, actually. Uh, I, I believe I counted all of my minifigures. There's uh, upwards of 100 minifigures in this singular battle. Uh, we've Some of my favorite figures is, like, over here, we've got a guy with an STG-44 reloading. So I really like that. And we've got a German throwing a Molotov cocktail over there. And some of my favorite uh, allied uh, figures are probably um, over here on on uh, the Easy Eight tank. I think um, I got that guy a custom minifigure from Brickmania, the U.S. Sergeant, and he looks really good as a tanker, so I put him on there. And probably over here, down here, I got an ad uh, the Oddball add-on pack from Brickmania. I didn't get the actual set, but I got the um, the sticker pack, so I put them from Kelly's Heroes. I love that. Yeah, one of my favorite World War II movies of all time. 
So they're probably only here to steal that gold earlier. <laughs> Absolute classic. If anyone watching this has not checked out Kelly's Heroes, definitely do that. It's fantastic. Another great detail I wanted to point out is some of the kind of explosions and the way they use fire effects on some of these vehicles. Yes, um, I, you've got a Jeep down there that's been destroyed in a, a Panzer V, which the Panzer V was actually a Brickmania Panzer III from a while ago, but I, I like converted it to a different type of tank for late war. Uh, yeah, I've used explosions, especially on that um, Opal Blitz over there. You see uh, the black kind of makes it look charred out almost. So I really like that design with the Opal Blitz and how, how much fire there is because when, it's a, when there's gasoline there, there's going to be a lot of flames. So we've got a lot of flames there. So is there a lot of Brick Mania uh, vehicle representation then throughout the build? Oh, yes. Definitely a lot of... This is like almost my entire collection. I think I've got like two early war tanks that I haven't had that it is not in this battle. But other than that, I think I've used almost all of my Brickmania kits that I've collected over the years, many years that I've been uh, buying from that company. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned having to rebuild the bridge here at the show. You got some interesting kind of architecture in here where you're using those like cylinder pieces stacked on top of each other to give the idea of the, the steel sort of beams. So as you're rebuilding that, how did that come back together? Yeah, so I... Uh, I actually didn't have a lot of reference pictures from when it was actually built. Um, so I only had like one uh, like kind of blurry picture of the, the bridge. So I really had to almost like redesign it um, from to what it is here. I mean, it, it's roughly the same. But yeah, I tried to uh, use those uh, cylinder pieces to emulate like the the steel going up because if you look at pictures of the Lundorf Bridge you can see especially those steel and those those uh, pieces of big rebar steel going across from uh, over on the other sides so I tried to do that a lot. And then obviously you had to rebuild the bridge but for the rest of the build what was set up like when you got to the show here? Um, I think those towers uh, I had all of them wrapped in bubble wrap and put in a box they they weren't really they weren't too bad to put back together because some of them did uh, kind of break off a bit. But I'm I'm so used to building those because I had to build four, and each each one has um, like six sides. So I had to build so many of those sides. So I'm kind of used to building those. So it was it was better to um, to rebuild those towers because there wasn't much to rebuild with those towers. And same with those sides. Because the two sides, because um, the two sides split off into two separate ones, because you could see, especially on uh, this, the one on the far left, there's like a little split down the middle on the bridge. That's that's uh, like the split from the two different uh, sides. So I could put them in each d separate container. Yeah. Well, fantastic work here. Thank you so much for taking us through the whole battle and the layout. A great work. Looking forward to seeing more from you in the future. Thank you very much.